So the next SSRI that brings me to is fluoxetine or Prozac. Here we go. Here comes the Prozac. And the other receptors that it hits are 5-HT2C and NET. Um, it's FDA approved for depression in kids older than eight, uh, OCD in kids older than seven, panic disorder, bulimia, PMDD, um, but for there it's called uh, Seraphim, and it's used off-label for PTSD and social anxiety. So 5-HT2C increases dopamine and norepinephrine, and for some reason the, the fact that it has hits this receptor helps me remember that it's approved for bulimia. Um, it's the only SSRI that's approved for bulimia, and when you use it, you have to use it at doses that are a little bit higher, like 60 milligrams. And it also, um, Prozac has the lowest risk for weight gain, and it possibly even causes early weight loss, but that weight loss doesn't typically uh, last. And another thing it helps remind is that uh, Prozac is commonly added to Zyprexa, and that's FDA approved, and both of those drugs hit 5-HT2C. Prozac also has weak net blockade, especially at high doses, um, which helps me remember that it can be a little bit activating, which just means that it helps with reduced positive affect. So it could be especially helpful in patients who could use some activation. The downside, and this also helps me remember that um, Prozac isn't that great for anxiety and it can worsen insomnia or agitation or even a panic attack. Um, so it's possibly worse in insomnia and possibly worse for treatment emerging anxiety. The other property of Prozac that's worth remembering is, is that it has a long half-life. So it's five days for fluoxetine and then nine days for its metabolite nor fluoxetine, um, which means that it's got the lowest risk for discontinuation syndrome. So it's particularly good for people who you know are going to miss doses. Um, but the fact that it has this long half-life also helps me remember that it's possibly got the, the slowest onset of action. Prozac is also favored in children. It's the only antidepressant that's approved for children over eight. Um, like I said before, Lexapro is approved for children over 12. And typically Prozac's not used first line. Um, it didn't do as well on a meta the meta-analysis by Cipriani, and it also has drug interactions and it's a, a potent inhibitor at several CYP enzymes, so it can raise the level of a lot of drugs. So if I had to summarize Prozac in one line, I'd say it's an SSRI that hits 5-HT2C, which for some reason helps me remember that it's approved for bulimia. And it also has net blockade, which causes it to be a little bit activating. And it's got a long half-life, and it's approved in kids in eight, but it has potent SIP inhibition. And that was Tony Soprano who introduced us at the beginning of the slide to Prozac. And I think Tony would have been a pretty good patient for Prozac. Um, in the show, he mentions that he was using the the Prozac PRN. So, you know, he's missing a lot of doses. So I think he would have benefited from not having to go through the discontinuation syndrome. And also, I think he probably would need a SSRI that had no risk of weight gain. So now our next SSRI is fluvoxamine, which is Luvox. And the other receptor that it hits is Sigma-1, and it's FDA approved for OCD. And again, we have the Sigma Enigma. Um, and again, I can't help but notice that all the drugs that have the Sigma receptor are pretty, pretty good for OCD. So it's usually considered an agent for anxiety and OCD. Um, it's not approved for depression in the United States. It's got twice daily dosing, and that's because it's got a shorter half-life of 16 hours. And any of the drugs that I don't mention their half-life, it's pretty close to one day. Um, so flu, uh, Bluvox isn't used because it's a high risk for drug drug interactions. It's a potent 1A2, 2C9, and 19, and 3A4 inhibitor. So if I had to give a one-liner, it's an SSRI that works pretty well for OCD, not approved for depression, and it's typically avoided because of the drug drug interactions. So unfortunately, that brings us to our last SSRI, which is paroxetine or Paxil. And the other receptors that it hits are M1, NET, and nitrous oxide synthetase. And it's FDA approved for MDD, OCD, panic disorder, social anxiety, GAD, PTSD, PMDD. Uh, so basically alphabet soup we got here. And uh, metapausal, hot flashes, which it's known as Brisdel. And it's used off-label for premature ejaculation. And the most important thing to remember for Paxil is that it's an anti-muscarinic, and that helps you remember that it's the worst for constipation, it's got the worst sedation, it's the worst for weight gain, and it has by far the worst discontinuation syndrome. It also causes inhibition um, at nitric oxide synthetase, and that might help explain why the sexual side effects are particularly bad for Paxil. Um, it also tends to be preferred for anxiety early on, maybe that has something to do with the anti-muscarinic sedation kind of helping out. Um, I also remember it as it's bad for young people, it's bad for old people, and it's bad for people who use meds. Um, so for the bad for young is because it's most likely to cause fetal malformations. Um, bad for old because it's the only SSRI that's been linked to dementia. And it's bad for people who use other meds because it's a, a potent inhibitor at 2D6. So if I had to give a one-liner for Paxil, I'd say it's the SSRI with anti-muscarinic side effects. It also blocks net, um, but it's pretty problematic in that it, it causes birth defects, 
um, it's linked to dementia, and the 2D6 inhibition, inhibition is problematic for uh, medications, and it's known for a particularly bad uh, discontinuation syndrome. So that brings us to the end of our quick SSRI review. Um, now I'll just go over the one-liners again. So Zoloft, um, it's an SSRI that blocks DAT, so it works well with atypical depression. It's got an excellent safety profile and minimal interactions, especially at less than 150, but it tends to cause diarrhea because don't forget it's squirtuline. The next one is Lexapro. This is the purest SSRI. It's got the fewest side effects, the least interactions. It's approved in kids for that are 12 and older, and it's but unfortunately it's got the mild QTC increase. Then we have Selexa, which is um, escitalopram plus the problematic R and antimer um, that has a little bit of antihistamine and causes more QTC problems. Then we have Prozac that our friend Tony Soprano was on. Um, it's the SSRI that hits 5-HT2C, which um, helps me remember that it's indicated in bulimia, and it also blocks net, so it's activating. It's got a long half-life. It's approved in kids 8+, plus, and the problem is it's a potent SIP inhibitor. The next one is Luvox, so this is an SSRI that works well for OCD, because we know about the Sigma Enigma, and unfortunately it's not approved for depression in the U.S., and it's typically avoided because of the drug-drug interactions. And then the last one we have is Paxil, which is the SSRI with anticholinergic side effects. It blocks net, it's got problems in that it causes birth defects, um, it's linked to dementia in the 2D6, and it's also known for its bad withdrawal.